What is wrong with the Cincinnati Bengals? Hi again, everyone, and welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Erpine, joined by Tony Pike of Cincinnati's ESPN 1530. You can catch him on Cincy 360 every weekday, noon to three on ESPN 1530 in the iHeartRadio app. And he is joining us now. Tony, the Bengals are 0-3. If I would have told you the Bengals are going to start 0-3 back when we were doing training camp reports and everyone saw how short you are, what would your reaction have been? It would have been impossible to believe. One, because I, I thought we had seen this team take some really good steps forward throughout training camp, one of them being Joe Burrow. Um, and two, the schedule. I mean, it, the New England Patriots and the Washington Commanders were two of the first three games. We we knew going to Kansas City was going to be a challenge, but um, that, that New England game is an unbelievable loss. The Washington game is an unbelievable loss, and, and the way in which they performed in those games – is the most frustrating part of all. So, no, I, I would not have believed under any circumstances that you would have told me 0-3, assuming the main players on this team are healthy, which they are, uh, that this team would be looking at a, a winless start through three. What's your biggest concern? Because we saw Burrow go through camp, and there were ups and downs, and he was clearly still working through the wrist. I, I actually think he still is working through it yeah. to a certain extent. And, and yet he throws for 324. 29 of 38, three touchdowns, yeah. two long touchdowns to Jamar, frozen rope to Andre Yosevash. Like, Joe plays great, and, and they still lose. So what's yeah. your biggest concern going into Sunday's game against Carolina? Offensively? Or In general, well? ab ab about this team. Like, if for them to get a win, I thought at minimum they would be 3-1 and one after yeah. Sunday. And instead, you're, you're hoping, if you're a Bengals fan today, that they're 1-3. So just – the biggest concern about this team right now for you? The locker room and, and the culture oh. on oh. on many fronts. You know, I it, it could be one thing to say, okay, they've, they've got to be better defensively. Everyone knows that. Um, I wonder about the culture. You know, I I was on, on a team in 2009 where the offense was really, really good and the defense was not so good. And yes. <laughs> the one thing that kind of kept, kept the locker room together was we were winning. So yep. it's kind of like, hey, we're winning. We know the defense might not be that good, but we're winning. Had we been losing, there would have been some animosity in the locker room. And I would assume that the offense is sitting there saying, well, we're doing what we're doing. I, I would assume that at some point, Trey Hendrickson's going to say, I, I need some help. I, I, I can't face a double team every single snap. I, I worry a little bit about the culture of, hey, we're doing our part. You're not pulling the weight of your part. Um I worry about the the culture of a of a losing locker room right now. I I went from 09 to a good locker room because we were undefeated to 2010 in the worst locker room in the NFL because we were the worst team in the NFL in the Carolina Panthers. And I can tell you that there are players that start making business decisions, as Antonio Pierce said earlier in the week with the Raiders. I can tell you that there are players bad talking other players and players bad talking coaches, and it's just a toxic environment that losing generates. Winning hides a lot of stuff, and, and we've given Zach Taylor a ton of credit since he's been here because of the culture he's built. I think this is the most that culture has been tested. And you worry now if things start unraveling a little bit early Sunday, mm -hmm. do they they bring it all together, or do things start to come apart a little bit? I mean, think of, think of the fact here, James. Joe Burrow openly this week talked about trying to navigate ways to be a better leader or how to get mm -hmm. the message through to this team. So he's trying to figure it out. Who else on this team are the leaders that you look to? And as a leader, you also have to be performing on the field. Because if not, you're going to have guy. well, why are you preaching to me and you're not doing your job on the field? So there's a lot of that. And I think for the first time, you really see Mixon and Boyd and Cheeto and DJ Reader, who were not only good on the field, but they were good in the locker room as well. And you've got to replace all of that. And you've got your leader and your quarterback still trying to navigate that. I think all of that creates a little bit of an uneasy culture off of the X's and O's and the scheme aside for Sunday. Yeah, I, I think it's a good point. And you're right. The the winning part of it is such a such an element here where if they fall to 0 and 4, do guys start to point fingers? Or if they're down 14 to 3 early in the second quarter and Andy Dalton just threw a dime to Xavier Leggett and the crowd's yep. going crazy. What happens? I, I, I think that that's a, a really good point because I don't think they're there yet. Like I know no. some people do, and I don't think they're there yet. That They've lost 
three games by a total of 12 points. But to your point, the the losing, you continue to lose and things could unravel. And, and to your point, let's say it's 14-3. to three. From an yeah. offensive standpoint, what does that do for the mindset of Joe Burrow? All right, we're not stopping them again, so now I have to be more aggressive. Maybe I have to try to fit a throw in. Oh. You know, I, I equated it to when I was growing up in Cincinnati, Colerain High School. They yeah. ran the triple option, and they just smothered you. And as an opposing offense, you start to think, well, how many possessions am I going to get? Yeah. Uh, it almost becomes a must score every time you get the ball. And then as a quarterback, maybe you – make an uncharacteristic throw or you try to make a throw that you know you shouldn't but you feel like you have to because you don't think the defense is getting the job done or as a play caller you're like man we we need to run the ball in this drive because we need to give the defense a rest and you start to think of all these other things that that to me is the doomsday scenario if Carolina does jump out early because it just changes the mentality so much yeah you, you start to press and, yep. and that's what obviously you, you don't want to do you want to be in control early of this game take the crowd out of it and kind of suck the life out of, uh, yeah, out of whatever momentum the Panthers have going into Sunday. Uh, You you mentioned Joe Burrow and and I did a whole video on this. I thought it was interesting that Monday night, he said he was going to have to do a little reflection Wednesday. He said, plans on being more vocal. What do you make of that? Being a former quarterback, hearing that, knowing how Joe carries himself, interacting with Joe before Mm -hmm. you've interacted with him before, you know how he is. And I think there is a, a presence about him with, and he doesn't need to say much to have an impact on things. And yet it, it is kind of, it's interesting at least that yeah. he does plan on being more vocal this week. I I worry about it a little bit because it doesn't feel like that's how he's wired. Mm-hmm. And when you get to the elite level of athletics, a lot of times you can sift through, you know, what's what's genuine and what's not. And, and that's nothing against Joe Burrow. That's just not the type of leader that he's been, as you mentioned, you know, he's always been the quiet, I'm going to lead by example type of player. And you think of what comes with that when you're winning. It's the aura of Joe mm-hmm. Burrow, right? The the pregame fit and the throw against Buffalo in the snow where he's throwing and he's spinning. It's just, man, that's, that's Joe Cool. That's Joe Burrow. That's your quarterback. When that has to change because he feels like he has to change, it doesn't feel as genuine. It feels like, okay, he's trying to figure this out. But is he trying to be someone that he's not? Is he trying to be someone that's going to make him uncomfortable as the, the player he is? And a lot of that changes. You know, when, when you sign a deal like Joe Burrow and you're making the money that you're making, you're making that to be more than what you are on the field. You're making that to be the face of the franchise and in the community and in the locker room. So that does come with it. But there is a, a sense of this that you want to, okay, I get that that they need a leader because, again, is it Jamar Chase? I, I don't think so. Is it Trey Hendrickson? I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Is it Orlando Brown? Because he's only been here a, a year and three games. Is it is it someone else? Is it Ted Karras? Like Ted Karras. Yeah, they, but but yeah. they had they had more than one the last sure. couple of years. Joe Mixon was the leader, but he also felt like he kept things loose. Boyd had been there a long time. DJ Reader came in and was this this overpowering force on the defense. So the play backed up the tenure in which they'd been here. And now that's kind of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's the veteran. And now he's being asked to do something that he's never been asked to do before because they had that around him already built in. And and for a, a quarterback or a leader who, who doesn't think that is their leading style, that can be different. Joe said it was mutual, but the meeting with Zach in his office right after the Monday night game, I, what what did you make of that? What did you think? And, and how do you think it ties into his comments about wanting to be more vocal? I, I think it it was more to me back onto the culture side of things, of Zach mm-hmm. understanding 0-3, two bad losses at home. This is the time. Don't forget, I mean, Zach Taylor has been in bad cultures as well before. He's been in yeah. – UC was not good under Tommy Tupperville. When Zach Taylor was in, he probably saw the locker room. At those times. So I saw that as, hey, step in here for a minute. Let's make sure we're on the same page. Let's make sure we're united. Let's make sure we're saying the right things. And you hear Joe Burrow take the podium. He said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about the playoffs. I'm worried about having a good week of practice. And trying to just shrink a lot of the problems that are being had with this team. And, and I think there's so much about that in that quick meeting with Zach Taylor to just say, hey, let's just make sure that we're unified. Let's make sure that the players in that locker room don't feel any type of rift or any type of tugging 
in opposite directions because the uh, again from being in that locker room or on the type of team you know where we were worst in the NFL losing breeds a lot of bad stuff in a locker room you know yep. it's do I want to stay and watch extra tape I want to get home to the family yep. I want to get out early this week I want to you know or, or what's this guy doing that what you watching him on tape like it just it creates that you know it's sports when when you're losing and I think that was Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow making sure that the message that they had was unified and clear going forward. Today's video is brought to you by BetUS. BetUS is the place you need to get to right now because they have the fastest and quickest deposits and withdrawal process in the industry. It is super secure, easy to use, and they have all the betting lines that you could ask for. Right now, the Bengals are four-point favorites on Sunday against the Panthers. And the lines move from four to four and a half throughout the week. We'll get in on the action today with BetUS from prop bets to regular straight up bets and parlays. They have something for everyone. And right now with code YouTube150, you're going to get a 150% bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000. And then your next two deposits after that, a 125% bonus. All you have to do is go to BetUS.com and use code YouTube. 150. All right, let's get to the defense really quickly here. Obviously, it's been talked about a ton. I've talked about it. You've talked about it on your show. If you're Lou Anarumo, what do you do? Because you you mentioned guys have to be playing well to lead. Well, Sam Hubbard not playing well. Joseph Osai uh, not playing well. I joked with Austin Elmore via text. Sam Hubbard's moving like Austin, and Joseph Osai is moving like Tony Pike. I mean, it, it's just <laughs> it, it looks it looks rough out there for those guys. Miles Murphy is not coming back this week. We know about their injuries. Uh, at defensive tackle. So how do you generate pressure? How do you make Andy uncomfortable? Because obviously when he has time, we saw it last week, that dime to Adam Thielen, yeah. one of the best throws in the NFL last week, he can still ball. So how, how do you make it tough on Andy Dalton on Sunday? You know, I, I think one of the, the the core problems in the offseason was probably relying on Hubbard and Osai being better than what they are. Because everyone knew in the offseason the D-line was a problem. It was going to be how did they address or how will they address the D-line. I can't imagine the amount of pressure that they are putting on Miles Murphy now. Because when he comes back, if he's not what he's built to be, and you look at all those defensive draft picks that have been used and some wasted, then you really have a, a fundamental problem at, at how you're building this defense. But to me, you have to. You you have to generate pressure. You have to make a quarterback uneasy. You know, I, I said it in Kansas City on the 4th and 16. As a quarterback, 100 times out of 100, I would rather see a three-man rush in that situation than five. Right, I, I, I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to move. And they allowed Mahomes to do that on 4th and 16. And for 3.13 seconds per drop back, they allowed Jaden Dan. Think about that. Think about how long three seconds is to drop back there and see whatever you want from a defensive standpoint and to be kind of loose on the coverage outside of that. The the fourth down where they essentially had Zach Ertz bracketed and it was an easy completion. It just, it's not being made hard. And, and I know Andy Dalton has seen a lot. I'm going to bank on making Andy Dalton uncomfortable other than letting letting Andy Dalton sit back there against a four-man rush and pick you apart with, I know Adam Thielen is not playing, Deontay Johnson is a good weapon. Yep. Chuba, Hub yep. Chuba Hubbard can make plays. Xavier Leggett's a guy they drafted with very high hopes. I'm not going to let Andy Dalton just be comfortable like I saw from Jaden Daniels back there. So i got to find pressure. And look, you're not in a point anymore where you can just be patient and try to bring guys along slowly. We we were told all training camp that Dax Hill and DJ Turner were in a battle. Okay. Well, I've seen DJ, I've seen Dax Hill get beat, and I've seen Dax Hill not make tackles. So if you're going to be bad at one, you better be good at the other. If not, put DJ Turner in there for some reps. Jordan Battle was a guy who was very good against the run as a safety last year and covering in space. Why is Jordan Battle not getting some opportunities? Um you know, is it is it time for for Newton? Is it, it you have to start playing on defense with a sense of urgency, and you have to start playing different guys with a sense of urgency because that's what zero and three means that you cannot be comfortable in what you're doing, and that has to be changed now because if it doesn't change against Carolina, and you got the Baltimore Ravens coming knocking the next week, and, and Lamar Jackson saying, "Wait, Jaden Daniels just did that. Wait till you see what I'm going to do," and in your own division. Justin Fields playing at a much higher rate right now. The Cleveland Browns still want to run the ball. Like, it's not getting any easier. 
for the Cincinnati Bengals. So the the time is now. You got to start coaching with a sense of urgency. I think if you're Luana Rumo, and you got to protect how good that offense is going to be because I worry that the offense, like I said before, has to start thinking about, well, do we run our stuff here or do we need to run the ball a couple times to make sure that defense stays off the field and get some rest? Or do you start pressing on the offensive side of the ball if you're giving up a bunch of points? So figure out what you want to be. If you want to be this bend but don't break and try to hold the field goals, great, but then you better win in the red zone and and hold teams to three instead of seven because that's what worked for a long time for Lou Anaruma. But to me, you got to shuffle the personnel a little bit. Yeah, and force a couple turnovers. I mean, turnovers are the ultimate equalizer. If Jaden Daniels is going up and down the field, but he has two interceptions, then it's all right. I mean, these guys got to make plays. That's yep. the other part. Cam, Dax, DJ, Jordan, Vaughn, Gino, got to make plays. And and that's that's as big of a thing that they haven't done uh, as any, honestly. In two of these three games, the defense hasn't made enough plays. And I know he was 21 to 23, so it really doesn't matter. He was 15 to 15 with no blitz. So, yeah. Again, I, I saw two. I saw two bad misses, and it was when he had pressure in his face, and he missed an open uh, Terry McLaurin down the the middle of the field, and then he threw it six yards out of bounds because he had pressure in his face. So, you know, I I do think that that you have to make a quarterback uncomfortable, and I also think the timing at which you do it right. They fourth and sixteen. I mentioned I I would have never let a, a team triple team Trey Hendrickson, and last week on third and seven. That wouldn't have been the time out of Brock cover zero because Washington was already in field goal range. Keep everything in front. Make a tackle. You're down eight. The timing at which he chose to go to the cover zero, and yes, Jaden Daniels makes a unbelievable throw, a Heisman Trophy throw, but yeah. don't give him the opportunity. Don't give him the chance to do that. So the timing at which you use those blitzes is also very important, but the the number one thing from playing the position that I wanted to do as a quarterback I wanted easy completions, and I wanted to get comfortable early. And if you allow a quarterback to do that, the confidence grows, the movement grows, and all of a sudden those small windows, you you felt as as a basketball player, you feel it all the time where the the hoop just feels big. Well, if you you get easy completions and you don't feel pressure early as a quarterback, things start to open up a lot more. The game slows down. Your confidence grows, and that becomes a serious issue for this Bengals defense. Yeah, it was – it was like Illinois against you in 2009. You, yep. you hung 50 on their head. Yep. Defense gave up 36. You put a, a 50 piece on the Illini, and it's because they couldn't get to you. You feel I, good. I, I just, you, you're comfortable, yeah. and you're allowed to get into a rhythm, um, unlike we were able to do in the, the Orange Bowl. We'll yeah, just bring it full circle there. Yeah. See, I wasn't going to rip you. I'll Normally, do it, I'll I rip do you. it before you do it, but yes. In, in, you're right. Jaden was way too comfortable, and if they let Andy get that comfortable, it could be a long day for Luana Rumo's defense. He is Tony Pike. You can catch him every single weekday, noon to three on Cincy 360 on ESPN 1530 in the iHeartRadio app. Tony, you're the man. I appreciate you coming on. No problem. Anytime.